right, so this video is going to talk about work orders and the different ways of entering them. Before we launch into it, uh, just a quick point on the difference between purchase orders and work orders, and we covered this in the purchasing video already, but uh, just to summarize quickly again, purchase orders are everything outside your business, or another way to say it is everything where you're getting a bill or an invoice for it, or another way to say it is purchase orders are things that need to go to your accounting. On the other hand, work orders are all the other cases. So internal costs, costs that don't need to go to your accounting. And for the majority of people, this means labor costs or timesheets or tracking costs for things they own, like a digger, where it makes absolutely no sense to send a bill to your accounting system for something you own because no one's gonna pay that. We're gonna go through the two ways of creating work orders. If you've been through the purchasing video already, the ways of doing these are very similar to how purchase orders get created, but there's a couple of few unique little differences, so well worth uh, a watch and well worth going through. Now, I'm gonna start with the fixing carpentry category here, and I'm gonna go that labor item, that's what I wanna grab, and order. It'll pop open as though it's gonna be a purchase order and you can see it in the top right here because 99.9% .9 of the time it is. And I'm gonna actually say, well, no, it's a work order, it's internal and it will change around a little bit, changes up to here to be work order, changes this to assigned to instead. And the other main difference is in the status menu where we previously had received, we've now got completed because instead of receiving a bill, we actually are ticking something off. So I'll go ahead and fill this out. Worth a quick mention here, you can absolutely send purchase orders to people. It's a way of assigning tasks. We don't see it a huge amount, but it absolutely can be done. And if you are gonna do it very much like doing a purchase order, you're just filling out all the boxes before you ultimately go save and send. However, we won't go through it in this, uh, in this video. I'm gonna say this has been a labor item for labor, say doors. And I did this one. Most commonly, we will see people have one contact for their own business and just assign things to that. Uh, we also do see people who will have all their different employees loaded and they'll actually assign it to each individual person. There's pros and cons of each. Uh, ultimately, it's quicker and easier to assign it all to a business and then maybe add notes or add different lines for different people. But uh, you'll, once you start doing this, you'll definitely figure out what kind of suits you best. We're also gonna have a talk about um, a timesheeting application we plug in with, which will, which will come into, uh, into play a bit later on. But for now, let's just select myself. And moving on down, we had six hours at 65 an hour allocated. And if I go up and say completed, same process as if I was receiving an order, you know, told it what and who, and the next step is move the process along. It'll pop up with this yellow box saying, great, did you complete what you estimated? I.e., Build Exact needs to know exactly or actually what you completed so it can compare to the estimate. Um, please update any quantities dollars below. So if I went through and I did all these doors and I did a bit of a superhuman effort and came out in four hours, what it's gonna do is really just compare the dollar value against dollar value, but it's still using the four times 65 to figure that out. And I'll put that in. Note that it is totally fine to change these to lump figures. You don't have to say four times 65. You could just put a lump figure in. You can uh, keep in mind, ultimately, it, all it really cares about is this final dollar figure. So I pop that in and it does the same thing as it would for a purchase order. It compares estimate versus actual and tells me how I've tracked. Perfect if you are you know, estimating all your hours and you wanna go back and see how you've actually you know, stacked up against that. So that's method one and that's perfect if you wanna put it against a specific line. Option two is, and we covered an example for purchase ordering like this as well, you can go straight into work orders and just go, yep, add a new one. We'll say this is, let's say labor for, I uh, will say brickwork. work. 
And if you're adding, adding in bulk timesheets with multiple people, generally this is gonna be easier because what you can do is you can add several lines at a time. And you can say, you know, Tom and Steve, uh, these are our guys and how many hours they did. Eight, eight. And I'm putting in unit costs here. Uh, you would have noticed in the previous one, I left it at the estimated rate. If you're entering them in, the only real consideration is that you're comparing apples with apples, i.e. if you budgeted this at a cost rate and then added markup, then you should be putting in the cost rate here. If you budgeted this as a charge out rate and didn't really add any markup to it, then you should be putting in the charge out rate. Because what we want to be able to do is really just see, you know, are the number of hours correct? And this will be thrown off if we estimate as a charge out rate and then put it in as a cost rate. It'll show we're making heaps of money, even though the hours might be actually exactly the same. So quick point there. I'm going to say 65, 65. And as with the purchase ordering example, I'm just going to tell it which category to put this into. We'll say it's been completed. And again, it'll pop up. Did you complete what you estimated? Looks good. Happy with that. Um, you could obviously be as detailed as you want here. Save and close. It will add the new order. And back in the actual costing screen, if I go into brick, it will have added two new lines like that. As with the purchasing or as with any ordering really, it's tracking against the total cost and um, it's a great way to still compare, um, you know, whether you're over budgeting, under budgeting or selling yourself short when you quote these jobs up. Final little quick note is we have the option to connect with a timesheeting app called Deputy. Um, there is a whole other video for this. The main reason for touching on it here is that it does get used quite a bit, get quite a bit of interest on it. And to summarize how it works very, very briefly, we will send the list of cost categories to deputy and the people on site will then log in and say, yep, I worked on bricklaying for however many hours. Deputy knows charge rates or cost rates and it brings it back. It actually fills it out almost identically to how I've done this here, except it'll say deputy timesheet Tom. Um, so it's a very quick way to add new lines and track against whole categories well worth a look if particularly if you've got a number of staff on site awesome that's it for work orders